You and I have both been told for years that fiber is essential. We must have at least 25 grams of fiber per day, the pundits say, to improve the health of our bowels and prevent various conditions, possibly even cancer. But in today's show, I'm gonna share with you an analysis that might help you rethink fiber. And this is really important, particularly if you suffer from gastrointestinal issues like constipation, diarrhea, bloating after meals, because this analysis in over 50 subjects over the course of two years uh, that was published, by the way, in the World Journal of Gastroenterology, and this is an old paper, but I get a lot of questions on fiber. You know, I have a lot of clients that I work with that have cardiometabolic issues, increased waist circumference, belly fat, uh, high blood pressure. And I often tell them to reduce the carbohydrate intake in their diet, have more protein, have more whole foods. And they experience benefits, but they ask me, well, hey, Mike, what about fiber? Like how much fiber should I be having? And I like to share this article with them and explain to them what I'm going to explain to you now is that in individuals that reduce their fiber intake, they actually experience amelioration of their constipation and their poor bowel habits, as well as bloating. Now, this is challenging. And in fact, seven of the over 60 subjects that were part of this analysis found that even after they improved their constipation and their bowel movements by going on a no fiber diet for two weeks, they wanted to go back on the fiber, even though it was causing constipation. So this is indelibly inked into a lot of our minds that we have to have a certain threshold of fiber because fiber is so healthy, but it turns out that fiber is almost like a traffic jam in your small or your large intestine, and it can even induce constipation. Uh, it turns out that having more fiber doesn't actually draw more water into the colon, that about 70 to 75% of the foods that are in your colon have moisture and water, regardless of how much fiber you have in your diet. Fiber is linked with bloating and gas and increased feelings of gastrointestinal distress, which is how this prospective longitudinal case study uh, came about is to investigate the effect of the decreasing fiber intake in patients with idiopathic constipation. So idiopathic constipation meaning means uh, these individuals went to a gastroenterologist, they had constipation, they underwent extensive analysis and colonoscopy, and there was no organic cause behind their constipation. And so they were part of this study to investigate, well, what happens if we reduce your fiber intake and have you have zero fiber for two weeks, and then uh, based upon your preferences after two weeks, have no fiber, mild amounts of fiber, or high fiber in the diet. And it turns out that majority of the subjects that continued on a zero fiber diet went to the bathroom every single day. And the mean bowel movement in prior to the intervention was just one bowel movement for every 3.75 days. So it's about once every three and a half, four days. Uh, but again, after the intervention, the people who stuck to the zero fiber diet were having one bowel movement every day. Now, the people who underwent the intervention, uh, but then went back on high fiber diets, still had constipation, which I think is quite interesting. And it turns out that majority of these subjects identified as being vegetarian. So they, they felt that they must have fiber because fiber is ostensibly healthy for us. And this really speaks to the biases in nutrition and uh, metabolic health and, and health in general is oftentimes we get stuck in these silos and it's hard for us to see outside of the silo. And so again, I'm not discouraging everyone to cut out fiber. I'm not, if you're having healthy bowel movements and you don't have bloating or constipation or diarrhea or irregular bowel movements, then please don't change what you're doing. But if you do have challenges with going to the bathroom and you're constantly gassy and bloating and, and have all these symptoms, you might want to consider reducing the fiber in your diet. Now, I just want to share a story with you. Someone who's uh, really near and dear to me, a uh, really good friend in my life, was encouraged to go on a vegan diet in 2001. And uh, she went, uh, it was, I think, early, early to mid-January in 2001. By April, she had such bad uh, gastrointestinal bowel issues that she was referred to a gastroenterologist and underwent extensive analysis, uh, having an uh, endoscopy through the throat and then a colonoscopy on the same day to figure out what is the cause of, like she was having sometimes bouts of constipation followed by up to 16 bowel movements per day. And prior to this, she didn't remember having a lot of you know, gastrointestinal issues, the occasional bloating or flatulence and, and uh, things like that, but not having like this wide swing and constipation followed by uh, you know, excessive bowel movements. And it, she figured out that she had villus atrophy, probably gluten sensitivity, uh, but there was no real reason why she had a lot of constipation. The uh, colonoscopy was unremarkable. There was no polyps or uh, you know, cancer or things like that. 
which really kind of confused this individual. And she uh, still underwent this uh, vegetarian vegan diet because it's better for the environment, right? It's, it's better. It must be better for your health. And she watched some documentaries on Netflix and things. And uh, um, the gastroenterologist didn't advise her to change her diet. They said, it seems like you're eating a healthy whole foods diet. There should be no reason why these healthy whole foods, you know, from plants would be causing your bowel movements. Uh, and then still a year later in 2022, her gastrointestinal symptoms had not improved. And so she went back and did another endoscopy in this. And they just said, hey, your villi look a little bit less atrophied because she's cut back on the gluten since this time. But still, there's no real reason why you should have all these challenges. Continue with what you're doing because you're eating a healthy whole foods plant-based diet. And then when she started working with me, she went from just wildly uh, having all kinds of bowel issues, constipation, then diarrhea, and then back and forth, uh, eating more of a whole foods animal-based diet with mushrooms, with olives, with ferments, and bowel movements are a non-issue. Uh, regular bowel movements within an hour of waking up every single day, usually well-formed, usually easy to pass, uh, not the feeling that there's still residual fecal matter in, in her uh, colon and things like that. Uh, they don't impact her bowel movements, that is, don't impact her daily living anymore. She doesn't need to run into a McDonald's or Burger King uh, bathroom, you know, like she used to when she was on her way to work. And it wasn't until she slowly realized, wow, I, I don't have an issue with my stools anymore. This is not a problem in my life. I'm not on the toilet for hours a day anymore that she realized that it was the vegan diet. It was the high fiber, the beans, the legumes, the lentils, all of the brassica, the kale, the broccoli, all of those these things that were causing her bowels to be inflamed. But no specialist, and she worked with people all across the country, no one mentioned that maybe you might want to cut out the fiber in your diet or at least reduce it temporarily. And so that's why I share this story with you and as well as this, these, this analysis to help you better understand that perhaps fiber, we need to rethink this a little bit, especially in people who have constipation, diarrhea, bloating, and gastrointestinal issues. So before we continue and dive deeper into the study, I just want to say thank you for being here. I really appreciate your views, your likes, your shares. I appreciate you subscribing to this channel, and hopefully you find this breakdown and, and, and helping us to rethink the importance of fiber helpful. If you do, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Also, because we're talking about metabolic health and gut health, it's important that you understand that berberine has been used for over 3,000 years in traditional Chinese medicine. It's a tool that actually improves the microbiome in the gut and the gut hormones. And in so doing, it might support metabolic health. Uh, this is, again, a natural product that has a large dossier of human clinical data suggesting that this is a tool that can help with metabolic health and even might assist in the curbing of food cravings like pizza, crackers, cookies, and all these unhealthy foods that derail not only your gut health, but also your body composition goals. So there's over 300 reviews over at myoscience.com on this novel and uh, innovative bourbon fasting accelerator formulation. Check it out at myoxciense.com. Use the code podcast to save. You can use two to three capsules in the evening time. Again, this can really help curb your appetite and help kickstart your fast so you don't get it derailed by cookies, crackers, and temptations in the evening. Okay, so let's dive into the study titled Stopping or Reducing Dietary Fiber Intake Reduces Constipation and Its Associated Symptoms. Okay, so this was a prospective case study, longitudinal case study that occurred uh, between the years of May 2008 and May of 2010. There were 63 cases of idiopathic constipation presenting to a gastrointestinal clinic in actually Singapore. And they were enrolled in the study after a constipation excluded an organic cause of constipation. Patients with previous colon surgery or a medical cause of their constipation were excluded from this analysis. All patients were given an explanation of the role of fiber in the gastrointestinal tract, and they were asked to go on a no-fiber diet for two weeks. Thereafter, they were asked to reduce the amount of dietary fiber uh, intake to a level they found acceptable. Dietary fiber, symptoms of constipation, difficulty in evacuation of stools, and bleeding, abdominal bloating, or abdominal pain were recorded at month one and six months after. At six months, 41 of the 63 patients remained on a no-fiber diet, 16 on a reduced fiber diet, and six resumed their high-fiber diet for religious or personal reasons. Again, the uh, investigators actually report that many of the people who reverted to a high-fiber diet were actually vegan or vegetarian, which I think is quite interesting. So patients who stopped or reduced dietary fiber had significant improvements in their symptoms, while those who continued on a high-fiber diet had no change. Okay, let's just pause right there. Isn't that really interesting? So when people resumed their no fiber diet, their symptoms really improved and they did not have the constipation and the bloating. 
But when people reintroduce high fiber diets, their symptoms came back, but they still did it anyway. So this goes to show the human mind is fraught with bias and confirmation bias thinking. And we, we hear these ideas and it's hard to unlearn. This is why the medical community is so focused on cholesterol. This is why uh, people are still focused on eating whole grains as heart healthy and, and saturated fat is bad, you know, meat is bad, all these things. So it's important to understand that biases really influence our nutrition habits. So I think it's important to try things on, see how they do for your body, use objective analysis like blood work to see what a dietary strategy does for your own body and then make adjustments accordingly. Okay, so I think that's really important. So the investigators write, of those who stopped fiber completely, the bowel frequency increased from one motion in 3.75 days, that is almost once every four days, to one motion or one bowel movement in every day. Uh, and the, the confidence interval there is P of, of 001. So you could redo this 999 times and you would get the same result. So high confidence interval. Those with reduced fiber intake had increased a bowel frequency from a mean of one motion per 4.19 days to one motion per 1.9 days on a reduced fiber diet. Those who remained on a high fiber diet continued to have a mean of one bowel movement per 6.83 days before and after consultation. Think about this. Imagine this. Your biases are so strong that you go on a zero fiber diet, you notice benefits, but you go back in a high fiber diet and you only have a bowel movement once every six and a half some odd days. That is crazy. I mean, I, I'm smiling. I'm, I'm not trying to poke fun at anyone, but it's crazy that our biases can be that strong. How could that be healthy? That's, it's, we know that bowel movements are healthy for the body. And if you're eating in such a way that it's causing you to only defecate once every six point what was the exact number? 6.83 days. That's not healthy, my friends. I don't care about what labels or what attributes, plant-based, vegan, whole, whatever. That's not healthy. If you're only going number two every once every six days, that is uh, incredibly unhealthy. For no fiber, reduced fiber, and high fiber groups, respectively, symptoms of bloating were present in 0% in the no fiber group, 31% in the reduced fiber group, and 100% in the high fiber groups. Again, so imagine eating in such a way, knowing that when you reduce the fiber in intake in your diet, it improves your bowel movements, but then you go back on a high fiber diet, you have bloating and constipation. I don't understand the human mind sometimes. And again, I'm not picking on these people, but it's just, it's crazy how strong our biases can be. So it's always good to challenge your biases. Okay, so moving on to the discussion. The scientists say this study has confirmed that the previously strongly held belief that the application of dietary fiber to help constipation is but a myth. Our study shows that a very strong correlation between improving constipation and its associated symptoms after stopping fiber intake. Constipation is often mistaken by the layman as the state of not passing stool with the subsequent false notion that making more feces will allow easier defecation. In truth, constipation refers to the difficulty in evacuating a rectum packed with feces and easier defecation cannot possibly be affected by increasing dietary fiber with increases in bulk feces. In this paper, we looked at constipation both as the number of days before each motion as well as ease of defecation. It is well known that increasing dietary fiber increases fecal bulk and volume. Therefore, in patients where there is already difficulty in expelling large fecal boluses through the anal sphincter, these are verbatim words that these scientists are saying, it is illogical to actually expect that bigger or more feces will ameliorate the problem. More and bulkier fecal matter can only aggravate the difficulty by making the stools even bigger and bulkier. Several reviews and meta-analyses have already shown that dietary fiber does not improve constipation in patients with irritable bowel diseases. The role of dietary fiber and constipation is analogous to cars and traffic congestion. The only way to alleviate slow traffic would be to decrease the number of cars and to evacuate the remaining cars quickly. Should we add more cars, the congestion would only be worsened. Similarly, in patients with idiopathic constipation and a colon packed with feces, reduction in dietary fiber would reduce fecal bulk and volume and make evacuation of the smaller and thinner feces easier. Adding dietary fiber would only add to the bulk and volume and thus make evacuation more difficult. Whilst it is often stated in physiology textbooks that bulking agents improve peristalsis, there is no proof of this in practice nor experimentally. Regardless of the food ingested, small intestinal and right mid-colonic contents are fluid and all indigestible dietary fiber is suspended therein. Dietary fiber, therefore, cannot act as a solid bolus for the initiation of peristalsis. In fact, dietary fiber has been shown to retard peristalsis 
hemolysis and hold up gaseous expulsion in human experiments. Dietary fiber is also associated with increased bloatingness and abdominal discomfort. Insoluble fiber was reported to worsen the clinical outcome of abdominal pain and constipation. So again, why are we adding more cars to the freeway? If we have a bunch of traffic, in this analogy, traffic is constipation. So the idea that adding more volume and bulk will somehow already improve the flow problem is not really supported by rational physiolog physiological understanding. So I think it's important to acknowledge again, especially if you have symptoms of constipation and bloating, that you might want to minimize or reduce the fiber in your diet and just see how that affects constipation. And I would encourage you to be very objective about this and start to uh, write down your, a diary, get a food uh, app or a, uh, a journal and just write down what you eat, how much fiber you eat in a day and what your bowel movements are in the morning to see if there's any correlation. I will just say anecdotally, and I know it pains uh, some of you to hear this, I have a backyard garden, about 400 square foot dedicated to garden space. And uh, I too experienced similar symptoms to my friend that I was telling you about earlier when I first started gardening. And it was getting very excited about huge salads and a lot of superfood smoothies and, and having a ton of fiber. Again, it was just convenient. It was in the backyard. I always felt like I had a brick in my stomach. I was always bloated. And I literally thought I had colon cancer. Like I, I was so constipated and, and had all these bowel movements. And this was in 2000. 15 to 2016, I went and got a colonoscopy and I fully expected like a you know blockage and you know cancer, even though I, I don't chew tobacco, I have none of the risk factors for colon cancer, I had no polyps, nothing. And I was just shocked, like, why do I have all these symptoms? Uh, if I'm eating all these ostensibly healthy foods, well, it turns out that I was just having way too much fiber. And that's why it took me uh, a long time to undergo my own biases because when I started to hear about this carnivorous diet or carnivore diet, zero carb diet, I thought that is so antithetical to gut health and, and metabolic health. How could this possibly be helpful? But then when I started to eat this way, just as an end of one experiment, I no longer had these bowel movements. I no longer felt like I had a brick in my stomach. I no longer felt bloated. I no longer felt constipated. So, you know, it was through trial and error and challenging my own biases that I learned that having all of this bolus plant matter was probably not healthy for me, my friend. So I would just implore you, especially if you have gastrointestinal issues, constipation, diarrhea, and uh, irregular bowel movements and bloating, to just consider how much fiber you're having in your diet and realize that if you're adding more congestion to your already congested bowels and having constipation, you might want to reduce uh, the factors that are contributing to that congestion, which could be fiber. So I uh, appreciate you watching all the way and listening all the way through. Again, the title of the paper, if you want to check this out in the show notes, is titled Stopping or Reducing Dietary Fiber intake reduces constipation and its associated symptoms that was published in 2012 in the journal, the World Journal of Gastroenterology. I appreciate you tuning all the way through. We'll catch you on a future episode down the road. Have a great day.